Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Good morning and welcome to our Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Uh, my name is Claire and I'm on staff at Karis and uh, it's wonderful to work here. We're so blessed uh, to be here and I'm also blessed to be your host this morning. So if you're new to our show, I'm going to do a, um, a few announcements and then I'm going to hand you over to Daniel who has an amazing message today. But um, for those of you who aren't familiar how our show works, the last 10 to 15 minutes of today's program we're going to answer as many questions as we can. So while Daniel's teaching this morning, if you have a question on your heart or he says something that triggers a question, go ahead and ask it because if you're watching us live, you can put your questions into the chat section on whatever platform you're watching on. So uh, go ahead and do that because uh, you guys always ask really good questions and um, we love we love it when they come in. And um, so, yes, do that on the chat section. And then if you are watching live, obviously, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mumbling through my announcements this morning. Mm -hmm. I apologize, you guys. Um, let me go to when you can catch us live. All right, live five days a week. Um, Monday and Friday is 10 a.m. in the morning, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 p.m., and then Wednesdays like today, bright and early. And um, if, uh, gosh, I apologize, we came in at, this, it's snowing this morning, so I'm late and um, quite unprepared. So guys, I apologize to you. Um, this is not normal. Unacceptable, unacceptable. <laughs> totally unacceptable. My goodness, okay. If you need prayer, um, I think I need some prayer this morning, so I should call our prayer line, but if you guys need prayer for anything, um, don't be alone, call our prayer line, the number is 719-635-1111. And we have an amazing prayer team standing by 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. And they would love to pray with you. And then while you're on the phone with them, if you would like a resource on anything, just reach out to them and ask them because we have over 200,000 hours of uh, resources that we can bless you with. So we have topics on all sorts of issues of life. So go ahead and talk to them about that. But um, for now, I think I'm done with my announcements because I butchered the whole lot. So I'm going to hand you guys over to Daniel Bennett. Welcome this morning. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Better than me? Uh, about the same. About the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very cold here. This it morning. is, yes. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, it's great to be back, though. And, and I've, I've been gone for a little while because my yes. wife and I had our, our baby. Congratulations. So, yeah, our third baby. We had another boy. So now we have one girl, two boys. And uh, I didn't think about that when I agreed to do a super early live Bible study because I'm not getting as much sleep. Now, I used to joke that, I was like, I think secretly that, that giving birth is harder on the husband. Oh, um, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I repent. I, I won't even make that joke anymore. <laughs> no, it's, 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 uh, um, it's this time around, my wife has been taking care. I've been focusing on the other two when I'm home. And then uh, my wife's been doing almost everything uh, for, for the newborn. He's, but he's he adorable. is a cutie. Yeah, oh, my goodness. His name is James. He's, he's nine pounds, ten ounces. So he's a big one. Yes. Um, all but your children are cute. Yeah, well, I mean, well, they're all cute. Yeah, it's, yeah. he's the biggest. Though. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, so uh, I'm thrilled about that. It is so much fun. Um, and uh, yeah, now we're outnumbered. So it changes your parenting style when you can't do one-to-one -one anymore. Yep. It's like, all right, I got to get yep. two of them. Well, That's awesome. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. Anybody who knows me knows I love, I love being a dad. I uh, really enjoy it. My kids are awesome. I was like, I don't know if, if I'd enjoy being a parent as much if I had lame kids, but if they were duds, you know, as, <laughs> but they're amazing. So they are like, amazing. Uh, but yeah, they yeah, are. So anyway, yeah. uh, before I get started, I do want to say hi to my niece, Gia. She watches these and that's a huge blessing to me. She's seven years old. And uh, this is actually, this message today, I'm going to dedicate to her because uh, she mentioned something to me that she liked from one of my previous messages. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to share this message today. I also want to say hi to Angelo uh, and your niece, Hiromi, in the Philippines. Uh, I know not everyone can watch these live, and so uh, I've kind of become friends with Angelo over Facebook. And so hi to you and your family. Um, and so the message today is, is, the title is, God is Beautiful. 
Now, I wanted to call it I Am Beautiful, but I said, who would click on that? <laughs> um, but you'll understand. So I want to talk about beauty today. And, and kind of the main point is that God is beautiful. I mean, one of my favorite songs is Oh, Lord, You're Beautiful by, by Keith Green. And uh, um, God is beautiful. And, and so my, my point in this, typically, I've never heard a message on beauty. And maybe they happen all the time at women's conferences, but it's not something that men typically think about. And most of my life, whenever I thought about beauty, I was like, it, it's not a big deal. And when people want to be beautiful, I was like, best case scenario, it's not a big deal. God doesn't care. Worst case scenario, it's vanity and pride and it's, it's a bad thing. And so I, I just didn't think about it much. I didn't care about it much. And so, um, you know, for me, it was like, you should try to look presentable. Other than that, you know, don't try to look too good or anything like that. Now, I'm not talking just about um, your personality being beautiful, right? I don't think we're going to get to heaven and say, wow, God, you have an amazing personality. We're <laughs> <laughs> I know, God, it's super early, okay? <laughs> I think that we're like, again, if you read the scriptures, if you read the book of Revelation and in the, in the Old Testament, where it talks about people who had encounters with God's glory, it wasn't just... Um, this, it, it, I mean, it was the whole thing. It was every single facet, including, oh my goodness, visually, I'm overwhelmed at the beauty of the Lord. He's overwhelmingly amazing. And so, um, again, like I said, I used to think that beauty was a character flaw and I was wrong. And, and, and I want to explain a little bit of how God showed me this and why it's important. Uh, uh, like I mentioned, we just had our third child when my wife was pregnant with our first, with our daughter. Um, we would, you know, we always pray for our babies and, you know, sing to them in the womb and, and all that. And so I used to pray like, God, I pray for our children, for this child to um, have a heart after you. I, and, and we like to be surprised. So with all three yeah. of ours, we haven't known if they're yeah. boy or girl till, till um, they're born. And so it's praying. I pray this child uh, has a heart after you, that they have a, a heart of wisdom, that they're creative, that they're full of joy, that they, they know you, that they're healthy, perfectly formed in every way. And then my wife would jump in and say, and that they're beautiful. And I'd always be like, really? Like, that's not important. I'm focusing on all the important things. I am so spiritual that I, I'm only focusing on things that are important for anybody. And I was like, beauty, come on, honey. And uh, I, I just kind of jokingly roll my eyes. But then when my daughter was born, my first thought was, I'm so glad that my wife prayed for the new beautiful. Right? beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, th there's something to this where I was like, this isn't a bad thing to look at your child and say, you're beautiful. This is mm. absolutely amazing. And so I realized I was wrong. And, and God showed me even to an even greater extent um, that I was wrong when my daughter got a little bit older. And by the way, yeah, this is, uh, well, I'll, I'll miss that part. Uh, when I first met her, when I held my daughter the first time, and, and I'll probably talk more about my sons down the road, but I've had more time to learn things by raising my daughter. She's the, the oldest. Um, and also just kind of, I think you can, for me it's neat because when men have daughters and when women have sons, I think they get to see a different side of God that wasn't necessarily how they normally um, think about things. Does mm. that make sense? I don't know. You have a boy. So yeah, yeah, I've only got a boy though. Now. So I, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my man child. Um, I mean, we're close, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, yeah, when I, I mean, gosh, I look at him and I'm just like, he's just, I look at him through pure eyes of love. Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine how God sees us when I look mm -hmm. at my son. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> to me, it's fun because I see my daughter and, she, and her, so much of her personality is like mine, mm. but she's a little girl. And so I see it's yeah. kind of like me in a different context. You know, it's like yep. I see that similar to me, but because you're a little girl, you look at the world differently. And so it gives me yes. a chance to appreciate things I didn't used to think about. Um, you know, we do the little tea parties and <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so it's just a fun thing. So, yeah, with my daughter, uh, and this was probably a couple years ago now, maybe, maybe one year ago now. Um, but long story short, you know, I bought her a princess dress. I'm sure many of you fathers out there have done the same. Mothers also, you know, you buy your daughter a princess dress. Uh, my little boy has superhero outfits, you know, yep. <laughs> the whole thing. And so um, we dressed up my daughter in this princess dress and she went running to the mirror after getting all made up and my wife did her hair and the whole thing. She ran up to this big um, full-size mirror that we have. And when she looked in the mirror, I just saw her become overwhelmed. And she literally had to look away and peek at herself. Aww. And she got this, this smile that was so innocent and pure, just, look, just glancing over herself. And I could tell the look on her face was, I'm beautiful, I can't believe it. And God just spoke to my heart right then and there of, that's important to me, I love that. 
right? It, it dawned on me, I was like, I, I didn't even cross my mind to look at my daughter and say, don't be proud, honey. Yeah. No. <laughs> I looked at her and I was like, I'm so glad because she's thrilled and overwhelmed that she was beautiful. Mm. And I know that part of her thought process was, and I look like my mommy. Uh-huh. Right, and, and that's how kids think is they want to be like their parents and, and it blesses them so much And so that's when this sparked is I realized beauty is a big deal Right the word talks so much about how God is beautiful and if we're made in God's image th- Why would it be a bad thing for us to be beautiful? So many times we associate things and say well beautiful people are arrogant therefore beauty is a bad thing um, Things like that and and I just want to focus in on like beauty is a good thing beauty is from God True beauty. Now, sin corrupts things. Satan doesn't create anything. He only makes things bad. Mm. He takes good things and makes a bad version of them um, by removing God's life from it. And so the same thing has happened with beauty. Some people think beauty is just not a big deal. Again, I used to think it was a character flaw if someone wanted to be beautiful. I was like, you know, you, sh- you shouldn't care so much about that kind of thing. And God just showed me, no, this is part of who I am. And, and uh, you know, as you know, when God created Adam uh, before Eve, Adam was made in God's image. But then God split Adam into Adam and Eve. So Eve is made in God's image and Adam is made in God's image. But when God split them, they both highlighted different facets of what was inside of God already, right? So there's certain things that I think, certain aspects of God that I think are easier for men to understand and certain facets of God that I think are easier for women to understand um, just because um, Adam was split in two, right? So you got Adam and Eve now, but both are, are made in God's image. So... What God showed me when I was looking at my little girl, and this happens a lot, I know all your parents know the same thing, you can look at your children and you're like, if this is how I think about you, how must God think about you? Mm. How must God think about me? And so it's, it's, it's pretty neat to get to sit back and just see um, what, what God's thoughts are that stir up in you when you look at your own child and then realize, my goodness, you know, Jesus said, if you can give good gifts to your children, how much more do I give good gifts? You know, it's the same thing. If you think good thoughts toward your children, how much more does God think good thoughts toward us? So um, God does care about beauty. And I want to show some scriptures. Again, this is a Bible study. So I'm going to dig in a little bit on verses dealing with beauty. So God does care about beauty. It is not something stupid that only um, shallow people care about. There is a deep, important version of beauty. So I want to start with Isaiah 61 start, um, in verse 1. So it begins with, and, and you'll um, be familiar with this most likely, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Right, we know Jesus quoted this in the New Testament. So verse 2 goes on to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, and to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So here, you know, you see right there in the middle, it says to give them beauty for ashes. And I know it's easy to say, well, this is just talking about like deep spiritual beauty. I think it's talking about all of it, every facet of beauty. Because some people say the same thing, like, well, the healing right here is referring to spiritual healing and liberty is talking about spiritual liberty and all those things. And it's there's ways to to gloss over what's being said here. And and it's the whole package. Right. When God wants to heal us, it's talking about spirit, soul and body. He wants us to be whole and full of life. So here it says to give us beauty for ashes. And at the very end, it says all these things. Right. Um, Good tidings, healing, liberty, opening of prison to those who are bound, you know, comfort, consolation, beauty, joy, praise, all these things glorify God, right? Not only are these things God wants to give you, but God doing these things for you actually glorifies him, right? Again, it says the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified, right? So all these things that happen um, on the day of the Lord, right? These are things that glorify God. It glorifies God when you're healed. It glorifies God when you're free. It glorifies God when you're comforted. It glorifies God when you're beautiful. It glorifies God when you're full of joy. It it glorifies God when you're full of praise, right? These aren't things where God says, I guess if you must, right? He made us in his image on purpose because he wanted us to be like him. And he is beautiful. Again, that's why I'm calling this God is beautiful. I think everybody watching this would agree God is beautiful. But I think some of you are having a problem with me saying that you're beautiful. Or with me saying that I'm beautiful. That's a different topic. We'll talk later. (laughs) But if God is beautiful, 
then if you're made in his image, yeah. then wouldn't it be appropriate for you to be beautiful also? It's not, a, it's not a bad thing. It's not a shameful thing, right? God is good. Is it wrong for you to be good? God is holy. Is it wrong for you to be holy? No. These are things that if you, if you try to find these things in your own strength, that's a bad thing. If you try to find holiness in your own strength, you're separating yourself from God. If you try to find beauty in your own strength, you're separating yourself from God. But if it's because you're connected to him and it's flowing from him, that's a very awesome, powerful thing, right? It's, it's false humility to tear ourselves down. So another example with my little girl. Um, once she, uh, my, this was one that my wife was there for, and she told me about it. I, I love this story about her. Uh, my little girl was pretending to put on makeup. Uh, she doesn't know. If, she, if, if you're watching this, Olivia, um, it's, forget. It's, <laughs> it's she doesn't know she's pretending. Uh, we have a little vanity for her, a little mirror, and a little makeup kit and all this stuff. And so she likes to sit next to her mama and, and like pretend to put on makeup and all that. And so once my wife walked up to her and saw her in the mirror putting on makeup, my wife said, you are so beautiful. And my daughter said, thank you, mama. She said, for a minute, I thought to myself, maybe I'm not beautiful today. She's like, but then I thought, that's silly. I'm always beautiful. Oh, Olivia says this. <laughs> and my daughter said oh. that. And so I, th I thought that was awesome where I was like, yeah. again, I didn't think, you know, my wife didn't say to my daughter, oh, you shouldn't be proud. <laughs> right? And my wife's like, I'm so glad that you have that confidence mm. that that's how you see yourself. That when she's like, you know, when she got hit with a little lie of you're not a beautiful person, you're not beautiful, that she immediately, because of how we talk to her and how we, how we speak into her life, she's like, well, that's ridiculous, right? The fact that my daughter said, that's silly, I'm always beautiful. I, I just love that, right? That blessed my heart. I didn't get concerned. And same thing, I believe that God has that same heart toward us where he says, I'm so glad if you say, wait a minute, yeah, of course I'm beautiful, because God made me. God made me in his image. And so I'm not going to believe these lies from the enemy. So, um, you know, if that's what blesses us as parents, when we see our children like that, how do you think God is? Our beauty doesn't come from the outside, it comes from the inside, but it does affect the outside. So again, I'm not talking just about superficial, shallow beauty. I'm talking about true beauty that flows from us just like true holiness flows from us, true kindness, true joy flow from us. But when it flows from us, it doesn't just um, go through us to somebody else and not impact us at all. When something flows from us, it actually does affect us. It affects us on the surface also. Um, so again, like I said, Satan doesn't create. He only takes good things and twists them. He removes life from it, adds death to it, makes it a bad thing. So just because there's a bad version, a worldly version of beauty, does not mean that there's not a good original version of beauty. Mm, that's good. Matthew 6, um, let's move on to Matthew 6, starting in verse 19. So Jesus says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Um, so what I, what I want to highlight here is Jesus saying what you truly care about, where your heart is, should be on things in heaven, things in the spirit. Same thing with beauty, where we, we don't want to be so focused on our natural beauty that we get, you know, distraught as, as um, you know, moth and, you know, thieves and things, you know, it gets corrupted, right, over time. I mean, this world is, isn't going to last forever. But same thing here with treasure. He says your heart shouldn't be on your finances. It shouldn't be on your wealth. It shouldn't be on your friends. It shouldn't be on your influence, all those things. But he's not saying it's bad to have those things, right? So same thing where he says your heart should be, your treasure should be in heaven. But he didn't say it's wrong to have treasure in this earth, just that your heart should be on your treasure in heaven. That's what you should care about the most. Mm. So again, no one would say, well, I guess some would say, it's wrong to have money to provide for your family. Right? It's wrong to have money to pursue what God's called you to do in this world. And so it's not wrong to have resources. It's just wrong if that's where your heart is. Right. Same thing. God's not saying you shouldn't be beautiful in this world. He's saying you're, you should truly care about inner beauty coming from Him. But it doesn't mean that you can't have it in the natural. If you truly have spiritual wealth, it will cause you to walk in more abundance in this lifetime. Same thing with beauty. So again, I'm just trying to highlight that just because you should care more about what's in the spirit does not mean that it shouldn't affect you in this world in your own natural, actual appearance. First Peter chapter three, verses three and four says, and this is the verse I think that for many people is why they think beauty is something that they shouldn't care about. 
So 1 Peter 3, verse 3, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. We're saying don't let it only, merely, be outward. It doesn't mean don't let it be outward. It says don't let it only be outward. Uh, verse 4, rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Right, so this did not say the outward appearance is wrong. It just says, don't let it only be that. Right. Right. So, so again, there's so many times where scripture says, you know, don't just do good works and have the wrong heart. Let good works flow from the right heart. You know, things like that where he's saying, don't let your beauty, don't let how you care about your appearance only be on the outside. Uh, let it flow from the inside. But that does not mean that external beauty is wrong. Again, you, you see this time and time again. Um, well, I'll show some of these times again where, where, you know, God is beautiful. And anytime somebody had an encounter with God, they couldn't even look at him because of his overwhelming beauty. Mm. And so why would beauty be a bad thing if it's true beauty? Mark chapter 7. Uh, we'll look at another example here. Mark chapter 7, verse 20, um, starting in verse 20, says, And Jesus said, he said, What comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. Right? So what comes from within is what defiles us. So same thing with beauty. With beauty right? Is if, you have, if you're beautif beautiful on the outside and, and you're corrupt on the inside, then that's going to flow out and it's going to yeah. ruin that. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody where it's like in the natural, you should be very attractive. But because of your attitude, because of that scowl on your face, because you're com you complain so much, you know, you, you no longer see the beauty on the outside. You're just like, Ugh, like it just ruined it. Same thing can happen in reverse, right? Where not everybody wins the genetic lottery and, and is like, well, in this culture, in this day and age, you hit the jackpot, you, you know, um, I did, but that's a totally different story. <laughs> I can compare. <laughs> and so, no, so, but it's not just that, but it's, okay, if somebody who looks attractive has a terrible attitude, a mm. terrible heart, it, it, to, it takes away that, yeah. that um, the beauty. Same thing can happen in reverse, where no matter what you look like on the outside, if you have beauty and beautiful things flowing from within you, it does change how people see you. I mean, it's amazing. There, there's celebrities now, I won't list them because I don't want to be critical, but there's many celebrities today who in the natural, no one would think that they're good looking, but their charisma and their talent or their kindness, right? People look at them and they're like, you're the best looking person mm. in the world. You're, you're you know, rich and famous. We all want to be like you, whatever. You know, I'm not saying that's healthy. That's not. Um, but people think they're very attractive, even though if they didn't have their personality, their charisma, their talent, no one would look at them twice, right? So again, what comes from the inside actually supersedes, overrides just the natural. So don't think, well, because I did, I was, you know, I'm not stereotypically beautiful on the outside, then I just don't get to be beautiful. It's, no, again, look at the world. There are so many people who it's because of who they are that it makes them beautiful. And so what flows from within you can change you on the outside. It changes how you carry yourself, yeah. right? how you walk and how you talk. <clears throat> Confidence is attractive. There's so many people who, if they weren't confident, they would not be attractive, but because they are. And there's people who wouldn't normally be attractive, but they, you know, mm. um, people who could be attractive, but because they don't have confidence, they're not, right? When we have that inner satisfaction of, wow, God loves me, He likes me. God made me beautiful, He made me amazing. You know, kindness flows from me, joy flows from me. You know, loving other people flows from me. That, that changes how you look on the outside. It actually does change how people are drawn to you and how people yeah. see you. If you're confident and full of yeah. joy and peace, you're not struggling and saying, I want to be more attractive. You're just like, I'm just so full of God's life and God's joy that that's what people see when they look at me. Um, and so, um, again, it's what comes from within that can either corrupt you or what can uncorrupt you. Right? Yeah. Can, what yeah. flows from within changes you. It affects yeah. you on the outside. Right? Again, it's the same thing as grace, as holiness, anything else. The good version flows from within and changes you on the outside. Right? I, I like the example of, of a, a Christmas tree. I, I always like um, Christmas trees to compare them to legalism. Because right? a Christmas tree, you decorate it, you make it look really pretty, but it's dead. Right? It's not connected to the ground anymore. Somebody chopped it down and decorated it, so it's dead. So someone may look, you know, a Christmas tree versus an apple tree. Right? You look at an apple tree and you look at all the apples and all the leaves. 
You're like, wow, that's really pretty. Then you look at a Christmas tree and you're like, wow, that's even more pretty, but it's actually dead, it's fake. Mm -hmm. That's what legalism is, right? When it's like, okay, I'm actually dead on the inside, but I'm doing all the right things on the outside to try to look like I'm holy, to try to look like I'm generous, to try to look like I'm kind, or that I have a servant's heart, but it's all fake. Right. What we want to be is connected to the vine so that true fruit is flowing from us. Where it's, I'm not just externally forcing myself to look a certain way. It's just I'm being myself. Yeah. It just who I am is such a kind person. Who I am is such a generous person. Not because I earned it. It's because I'm connected to Jesus and it's his life flowing through me. Same thing with beauty. Being connected to Jesus, he is beautiful. I know it says in the natural that he wasn't, he wasn't beautiful. He wasn't super attractive in the natural where people are like, that must be God because look how attractive he is. And yet people were so drawn to him because it, what was flowing from him. So again, this isn't about just your physical genetics. I'm talking about it, it affects how people see you though. People are, again, you know, you know, the scripture where it says all the children are running up to Jesus and parents taking their children. If Jesus was just this hideous, horrible person. They wouldn't do that. And yet because of the beauty of who he was, mm. they were drawn to him and wanted to be near him. So again, anything from God that's coming from grace, it flows from the inside, but it does affect the outside. And there's fake versions of it that only are on the outside. So again, when we are something on the inside, it affects us on the outside. God wants us to have the real version. He wants us to walk in beauty just as much as he wants us to walk in healing and in kindness and in joy. Yeah. He wants us to walk in who he is. He wants us to enjoy what he's put inside of us. So um, uh, this scripture, um, I, I need to give some context for it. I want to look at Ezekiel chapter 16, starting in verse 9. And the reason I want to show this is because here's an example um, the context here isn't really what I'm focused on. God's talking about how Jerusalem turned its back on God. Um, I'm not focusing on that. In this example, though, is God saying, I made you beautiful. And God describes what beauty is. And so it's a metaphor. But God's saying, I made you beautiful and you, t you still ran away from me. So he's talking about Jerusalem. So we're not worrying about the context. What's interesting to me is how does God talk about beauty? And so the, the traditional way that people do this is they go to Song of Solomon and all that. And I'm not I'm going that direction with this. I wanted to find a different example here. So Ezekiel 16, verse 9. Um, God is talking to Jerusalem and says, I washed you in water, right? Hygiene is beautiful. <laughs> so I, that's for someone out there. <laughs> so I washed you in water. Yes, I thoroughly washed off your blood and I anointed you with oil, right? Perfume, things like that. Verse 10, I clothed you an embroidered cloth and gave you sandals of badger skin. I clothed you with fine linen and covered you with silk. I adorned you with ornaments, put bracelets on your wrists and a chain on your neck, right? So God's saying, I clothed you and I put jewelry on you. So again, why would God say these things? I did all these good things for you, Jerusalem, if they were bad things. Mm. So God's saying, these are good things in the natural. I'm going to use this as a metaphor for how much I love Jerusalem. So verse 12, I put a jewel in your nose. So apparently God's not against nose rings. Kidding, don't write me angry emails. Um, so uh, I put a jewel in your nose, earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver, and your clothing was a fine linen, silk, embroidered cloth. You ate pastry of fine flour, right? So first he's talking about, I dressed you beautifully. I gave you beautiful jewelry to highlight your beauty. And now he's saying, um, I, I'm feeding you amazing things. So... Um, you ate pastry, fine flour, honey, and oil. You were exceedingly beautiful and succeeded to royalty. Your fame went out among the nations because of your beauty, for it was, a per it was perfect through my splendor, which I bestowed on you, says the Lord God. All right, so again, the context here is totally different. You know, what I'm highlighting here is God saying, I made you beautiful. Let me explain what I mean by that. I clothed you in beautiful clothing. I, I put beautiful jewelry on you. I gave you delicious food and, and, you know, I'm, and it was, I made you so beautiful that you were famous for it. And again, why would God use a metaphor of that if these were all bad things? Mm -hmm. Right. So God's saying this is stuff that a good husband does to his wife, does for his wife is I provide for you so that you can be beautiful. Um, and he's saying, I did this for Jerusalem. I mean, and it says where it came from, it was perfect through my splendor, right? He's saying, I gave you my splendor. It's my beauty that I'm pouring onto you. So that's why it's not a bad thing to be beautiful because it's God's beauty being poured on you. It's God's beauty being reflected off of you. It's like God is a sun and we're the moon, right? Where it's like the moon doesn't produce light, it reflects light. So it's, I mean, it's not a perfect analogy because God actually did change you on the inside to where you truly have his beauty shining right. through you. Yeah. 
Um, so again, some scriptures I've used before. Um, I'll just hit these very quickly. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Right? Marvelous are your works that my soul knows very well. And we read this a lot. And sometimes we get numb to the words. But again, he's saying, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I mean, if you think about it, saying, I'm so good looking, it's scary. <laughs> when I look in the mirror every morning, that's what I say to myself. Wow. Is, <laughs> so, hey, you. <laughs> or maybe something else, I don't know. I look in the mirror and I'm always freaked out. And so I'm like, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, what happened there? Um, oh boy. So again, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. It is okay, again, I've said this before, but it is okay to say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God made me beautiful. Again, you're not giving yourself the credit when you do that. It is okay to care about your appearance. It's okay to be, to enjoy it. You don't have to, you know, again, false humility to say, no, 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 I, I'm not this, I'm not that. I'm not kind, I'm not generous, I'm not good looking, whatever it is. True humility is saying, because God made me this, I am this. Doesn't mean you go around bragging to everybody, but you can walk around with the joy of, I'm so glad that, mm. that I'm kind. I'm so glad that I am a forgiving person because he's changed who I am so much. I'm so kind, or I'm so glad that I'm beautiful. It's okay to think good thoughts about yourself because God thinks good thoughts about you. Um, I, I'll very quickly, Romans 8 verse 30 um, says, Moreover, whom he predestined, whom Jesus predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified, right? He's talking about us. If we're born again, right? He predestined us, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Okay, we're all justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. Right? A lot of people don't, don't um, a lot of Christians in the world don't know about this one. We're not just worms. We're not worthless. God has made us amazing. Here it says he has glorified us. He didn't just say, I'm going to justify you and hide you off in the corner. Don't ever mess up again. He's justified us and glorified us. That's how he, when God looks at you, he sees something glorious, not because you earned it. You know, I have to give the disclaimer because some people are going to say, well, wouldn't that make me arrogant? No, you didn't earn it. <laughs> it's yeah. a free gift, but if you receive the free gift, you can enjoy having it. God has glorified you. You are glorious, and that glory should change how you live your life, how you carry yourself in this world. Romans 3, verse 4, um, is where Paul says, Certainly not, indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar. All right, so I just like that one phrase right there, because so true. If you disagree with God, you're a liar. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Mm. If you look at yourself and say, I'm worthless, I'm ugly, whatever, it's a lie. If somebody else says it to you, it's a lie because God says you're beautiful. God says, I made you like me. I've glorified you. I've justified you. I've made you righteous. I've made you amazing. So if you say something different, you're disagreeing with God. And as Romans 3, 4 says, if you disagree with God, you're lying. So again, you, you have to get over it. Some of you may literally need to look in a mirror and just say, I'm beautiful. And then be like, ooh, that, it hurts to say it. I know for me, it was awkward. First time I, I started accepting like, I'm, I'm good, I'm kind, I'm generous, I'm, I'm gorgeous, right? <laughs> you know, because it feels awkward to say those things, right? And again, I'm not saying go around in the world and say those things to other people. I'm saying you need to realize that God thinks that about you and he's not afraid for you to accept it, to receive that gift. Again, not, not taking the credit, just enjoying the gift that he's given you. Mm. And the reason why I wanted to talk on this topic is because it is a big deal. I think a lot of people think, well, Healing is obviously important because that could save your life. Kindness is important because that can save your relationships. Beauty, eh, not a big deal. Why do you want to miss out on anything from God? If it's a big deal to God, if God's beautiful, if people who wrote the Bible took the time to write how beautiful God is, then why do you think that beauty is not a big deal? It is a big deal. It blesses God when you know that you're beautiful. It, does, you know, it doesn't just bless God when you know that He's beautiful. Right? It blesses him when he, you know that you're beautiful. Same again with righteousness. God, you're righteous. And God's like, yeah, but so are you. Mm. Do you have a revelation of that? God, you're holy. Yes, but so are you. Do you have a revelation of that? God, you're beautiful. So are you. God wants you to walk in, in everything that he's given you. It glorifies him, right? Again, it's same as joy, same as health, same as holiness. It reflects him. It glorifies God when we walk around and we're full of joy and just beaming that in this world we're reflecting his beauty. So if you ever feel ugly, remember that why you're beautiful. Again, it all comes from Jesus. Mark 1, 11. This is when God spoke to Jesus from heaven. It says, a voice came from heaven saying, you're my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Right? God is pleased with you in every way. He's proud of his creation. He's like, I made you amazing. God doesn't make mistakes. He made, I like to say, God is good at what he does. And what he does mm. is make people. Right? That's his favorite thing to do. 
That's, you know, he makes people and he's very, very good at it. He made you amazing. He made you on purpose. You're not an accident. He made you beautiful. He made you righteous. Sin tried to steal these things and God wants to restore these things. Another thing that you can say if you ever think that you're ugly is say what my daughter said. That's silly. <laughs> yeah. I'm always beautiful. Yeah. Right? And so um, my daughter, she's already a good preacher. I'm already stealing her notes. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So anyway, uh, I have 10 minutes for Q&A now. I look yeah. forward to any questions, I hope, unless it's just people saying, how beautiful are you, Dan? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm a 10 out of 10, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, um, so we've had some we've had some good questions that have come in. And, um, you know, talking, a lot of them, as I'm reading through these, some of them are to do with, you know, pure physical beauty. Um, mm -hmm. But I was reading a, a little thing. It came on my Facebook page one day. And when it comes to what people find beautiful, especially with the physical side, mm -hmm. it depends on where you are in the world. Yeah. You know, we're, in so America, true. you got to be stick thin and, and then, you know, big lips and whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then in Africa, you need to be big and voluptuous and that's considered beautiful. So right. we have this warped different, perception different. of physical beauty. Yeah. You know? And the thing is, is that what, what I'm talking about now transcends that. Yeah. Right? Because it, it is in the eye of the holder, cultural things, you know, trends, whatever, in the natural. Yeah. Because um, you see different generations, different cultures. I've been, I've lived in a lot of different countries and it's very true. I mean, in some cultures, uh, some people are like, well, that person's very attractive. And then they go somewhere else and they're like, oh, what about them? That person's really attractive. Yeah. So in the natural, all you have is a surface. But true inner beauty transcends that. So I'm not talking about if you, if you have a revelation of beauty that suddenly you will meet the world's superficial definition of beauty. And yet true beauty will, will override that. Like I said, there's people who don't meet, meet those norms. Um, and yet because of their who they are and, and the kindness and joy flows from them, all people see is who they are. It transcends. It goes be beyond that. But it does actually affect you, right? If you have a revelation that I am beautiful, you will walk differently. You will talk differently. Mm. You will, you'll, you'll take more care of how you look. Like you won't be a slob. You know, you'll dress differently because you'll be like, um, my body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to oh, be God's, in good shape. I want to. Yeah. yeah it'll, it'll change yeah. how you live, how you eat, how you dress, things like that. It doesn't mean that that becomes your main focus. It just, you won't be able to help it. You'll just be like, why would I not take care of of, of this and, and you know, just any, it's just like anything that's important, right? It's if you care about your car, if you realize that's a nice car, you'll wash it more often. You'll keep it clean, things like that, you know, so it will affect your physical appearance. It just won't change your genetics necessarily, right? It won't be like, mm -hmm. well, I, I weighed this much. Now I weigh that much, but it's no, the true beauty changes how you carry yourself, how you look. And there's people, um, again, I could have a list of celebrities that are well known and people think they're highly attractive, even though they don't meet the norm but it's the charisma and all that. And what we have is so much better than just superficial charisma. It can just be true kindness flowing from within where um, if I asked you, think of your favorite people that when you look at them, it makes you happy. You probably would list people that care about you, people that you care about, that you have strong relationship with who are really kind. And when you think about them, you don't even really think about their physical appearance. You just think about what you see when you see them. Yes. Right. And so again, it just transcends true beauty goes way beyond. So true. I have a friend back in England who I'm like, if you could just see yourself the way I see yeah. you, I'm like, you are so beautiful. And she doesn't because she's only looking at her physical yeah. and I see the whole package, you yeah. know? So, uh, yeah. It's even like when you look at babies, right? So every single parent, when they look at their newborn baby, the baby can be all scrunched up, you know, and just crying or whatever. And you just look at this scrunched up little baby and the parents like, I've never seen anything more beautiful yeah. in my life. Other people may look and be kind of like, huh, you know, <laughs> but, but you're, but be the love, right? The connection yes. there, you're like, all I see is I'm seeing you with God's eyes. Yes. And so you see way beyond what somebody who can only see on the surface can see. And again, so we can carry ourselves in a way where it, it draws people. I mean, yeah. even sinners were drawn. They wanted to hang out with Jesus. They, they weren't just, it was just like, I want to be near him. Um, it, it just, I like the guy. He's just so yeah. kind. And so he says things I don't even understand, but I just want to be near him. Yeah. So that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, sorry, six minutes, so I'll give quick answers. Yep, no, you're good. Now, you covered true humility in mm -hmm. your teaching. So can you, um, Stacy on YouTube is asking, can you describe false humility? Yeah, so false humility basically is, it's just a lie from the enemy of, you know, basically the, what the world says is that there's different versions of false humility, but basically humility is disliking yourself or pretending to be humble on the surface where it's, um, denying things, right? I mean, honestly, like I said, true humility is agreeing with God. It, it, you know, so if you say, um, 
oh, I want to be humble, so, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm a terrible singer. And if you're, if you're a great singer and someone says, thank you for singing, you're like, no, 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 I'm terrible. Um, or, oh, wow, you're, you know, uh, you ha your hair looks great. Oh, this, you know, you spent two hours getting it ready, and you're like, oh, this, this is awful, right? It's false humility to disagree with God, actually. See, if God says you're beautiful and you say you're not, you're lying. What could be more arrogant than to look God in the face and say, God, you're wrong about me? Mm. Right, so that's pride. So sometimes people disagree with God trying to be humble and they say, no, no, I'm worthless. No, I'm, I'm not valuable. I'm not important. I, I'm not good at anything. I'm all these things. And it's like, you're lying. You're disagreeing with God trying to be humble. So you're trying. So the world thinks humility is forcing something to be lower. True humility is saying, I know exactly who God says I am. I agree with it. I still choose to serve other people in spite of it. I'm not going to elevate myself, but I'm going to agree with God completely. Again, it is, it is a height of arrogance to say, God, you're wrong. Mm. So if God says you're beautiful, again, in the world, if you, if you walk up to somebody and say, I'm beautiful, they may be like, wow, you're arrogant, right? So in the natural, people say, um, oh, no, no, I'm not that good looking or I'm not that kind. I'm not that whatever. Um, and, and they're like, that's, that looks like humility on the surface. But again, it's pointing people toward you. It's pointing yourself toward you. That's pride. Pointing yourself toward God as your source is humility. So again, if you say bad things about yourself, it's because you think that you are the one who created these good things about you. If you realize this is just fruit from God, um, that's actually, um, it's liberating, right? Yeah. Because again, it, if you take the credit for, for you, that's pride. If you give God the credit, that's humility. So if you blame, if you say I'm ugly, then what you're saying is God, you're ugly or God, you're a liar, right? Because you're made in his image. So to me, that's kind of the difference in the world. People a lot of times just try to downplay things. Um, and, and I'm not saying that you can't, uh, you, you don't want to just go around trying to draw people's praise. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about more of just this inner satisfaction. If you're truly walking in this peace and contentment of, I just enjoy being who I am. Usually the way that reveals itself is it just, you try to draw that out of other people too. You want to overflow and bless people. It makes you more selfless, less self-centered because you're like, I'm satisfied. So I don't need you to praise me. I want to compliment you and look for good things and awesome things about you, not about me. So again, none of this should make us self-centered. True freedom is when we're free from being self-centered and we're like, man, thank you so much for making me like this, God. Because of that, <sighs> yeah. I can breathe easy. I don't need people to validate me. Yeah. Now I can focus on blessing people and not being afraid of if they reject me or not because I'm so satisfied between me and you that I can just focus on being kind to other people. So again, all this, what I'm talking about, really reveals itself in overflowing and blessing everybody around you and not being self-centered at all. And if people compliment you, you can just be like, well, thank you. Yeah. And then move on. And yeah. it, it doesn't define you. You're not like, aha, everybody loves me now. Everybody thinks I'm awesome. It's like, you don't think that way because you're like, no, no, God, hey, you know, hey, thank you, Lord, for using me like that, because that really blessed that person. Yeah. So again, it makes you very selfless to agree with God. I love that. That's really cool. Um, okay, Samaya on YouTube is asking, she says, I understand the importance of inner beauty, mm -hmm. but from a relational perspective, how much focus should be placed on physical beauty or appearance when seeking out a partner? Mm -hmm. um, well, how much importance do you want your partner to focus on, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's, um, again, like I said, same with anything else where sometimes we say, well, the inner, inner version is important, the outer version isn't. But th the Christian world has suffered so much because of that mindset of, well, I have spiritual <clears throat> riches and so I should be poor in the natural. Well, I have spiritual talent, so in the natural I shouldn't be good at anything that I do. I have spiritual health, so in the natural I should be sick. It's such a lie. I mean, again, with these examples, I'm sure you get where I'm going at with this, of we miss out. Anything that's true in the spirit should affect us in the natural. If we're walking in wisdom in the spirit, we should be walking in wisdom in the natural. It should be affecting our life. Good decisions have better fruit than bad decisions. Mm. If we're walking in true beauty, it should affect how we carry ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that you should have this very shallow th checklist of the DNA the other person has to have, of they have to have a nose that looks like this and ears that look like that. Because to me, if you're walking in true beauty, it will change how you dress, how you carry yourself, because you will value yourself more. You'll carry yourself with more confidence. And, and um, you'll want to be a blessing in how, how you dress people. You know, how you dress and how you carry yourself and how you make yourself look, if the, the, the pure version of it is actually a form of honoring other people. I can't see what I look like, but you can. So if I look like a slob, I'm actually dishonoring everybody who has to look at me. 
If I dress nicely, I'm honoring the people who have to look at me, right? And so um, if you walk in true beauty, then you'll walk in that kind of confidence and that peace of, I'm not trying to draw attention to myself. I'm just trying to bless everybody around me. Um, and that's what I look for in somebody else also. Somebody who's, you know, as you, as you walk in that revelation of beauty, you'll be drawn toward people who have that same revelation of true beauty also. And, and you, it, you won't, it'll just change how you think what you look for. It's, it's kind of like how if you truly, um, if you're a hard worker, you'll be attracted to people who are hard workers. If you're creative, you'll be attracted to people who are creative, right? So if you're truly walking in beauty and inner peace and joy of who you are, you'll be drawn to people who really like being who they are. And, uh, and, and that will affect how they dress, how they carry themselves. But again, to me, a lot of it can be, um, at the end of the day, the quality of somebody's smile and their facial expression and the look you see in their eyes will change how you see them. Um, somebody who's beaming with joy and kindness and all that, you may not look at them the same way that somebody who doesn't know them at all looks at them. Someone's character, mm -hmm. charisma, yep. the, the joy of the Lord flowing from them will change how you see them. So be like, man, they're the most attractive person in the world. Someone else may be kind of like, hmm, I don't see it. Like, I don't care, I do. They're the most attractive person ever. If you, you know, it's because of the whole package. Right? True beauty is not where you take one facet or another facet, right? In the world, they only look at the surface. In the Christian world, sometimes they only look at the spiritual. It should be the whole thing. So I think, um, this one I actually got from my dad. He used to tell me when I was single and talking about this kind of stuff. Because again, I used to think beauty wasn't important. My dad, he said, you know, you should be attracted and have chemistry, spirit, soul, and body. Mm. Right? Sometimes people get so spiritual, they say, well, I shouldn't be attracted in the, you know, in the natural, I shouldn't be attracted in our personalities or anything like we shouldn't click. It's all spiritual. And some people do the opposite. It should only be physical. I don't care about who they are, their character, any of that. It should be the whole package. You should say, I like who you are, the whole package, every facet of you in the natural, in the spirit, uh, um, our connection, our chemistry. So to me, when you're looking for a, a spouse, it's looking at the whole thing and letting it complement and, and, um, Modify, th right? Not modify things. It's, it's all. That's the whole package. It's, um, it's not just this facet. You're nine out of ten, and that facet. You're three out of ten. It's just you, the person. Mm. The person. And you need that whole package because eventually certain things <laughs> fade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you, natural beauty is fleeting. Yeah. Um, and yet the inner beauty, you won't see that fadingness if you True. truly love the person yes. and you see the beauty beyond the surface. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, we're out of time yeah. this morning. Yeah, sorry, I went a little bit over here. But uh, I'm, I'm rusty. Okay, I hope I hope you guys can give me some. And grace. I apologize for my rusty start this morning as well. Yeah, but <laughs> but uh, um, some of the questions that came in, you yeah. actually did answer either in your teaching or yeah. while you were answering someone else's question. Yeah. So I hope if your question wasn't specifically answered, that you actually did get the answer to what you were asking in the yeah. first place. Um, but Daniel, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank um, you. Um, this thank was you. great again. I yeah. hope you've enjoyed it. And um, yes. Today is Wednesday, so mm -hmm. tomorrow, uh, live Bible study will be 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And until then, have a fabulous day, and God bless you guys. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 